with me now is Josh Taylor from QUT. And Josh has been on the podcast before. He was he came back on, it was on December 2021 when he was a student and it was titled Podiatry Trumps Accountancy because Josh was an accountant, but then he saw the light. And, and then he came back on when I, he was in his final year. I had uh, four students come on to talk about what it was, what they were looking forward to in their final year and what they're expecting when they graduated. So Josh, it is fantastic to have you back on here. Hey Tyson, thanks for having me back. Yeah, really happy to be here. So I'm going to dive straight into these questions. Now that you're graduated, you're officially a podiatrist. First question, where did you look for job opportunities? So when you were searching for uh, employment, where did you actually look? Yeah, I guess I started thinking about um, employment a little bit more at the start of fourth year, even though maybe got a little bit more active about it towards the second semester. But probably just a really nice, simple method that I started with was just getting an alert from Seek whenever like a podiatry role was advertised. You just get an email normally every day and yeah. it would just tell you. And then it was just a quick way for you to you know flick through, see what was happening. I knew for me, it would be a little bit different compared to a lot of the students, because in my cohort, there were just two students doing like the honors part of the program. So rather than going to lots of employees and doing a lot of placement, I'd be say doing like the research project. Yeah. And that's like a, a big opportunity for people to see clinics and see clinicians and then for them to see you as well. So I knew I'd have to try and do other things. And right from the beginning though, when I started podiatry in first year on the holidays, I was like calling up clinics and saying, Hey, really interested. Um, I'm just a first year at the moment, but can I like come in and help you sit, watch anything? And a couple of the places said, Oh, look, we don't really do that first years, but let us yeah. know when you're a bit later in the degree. And that was absolutely fine. But I got to that, go was, in that was see. quite silly of them. I thought. Oh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. just crazy. It, it's because I keep telling people the earlier you can connect with students and maintain mm. that relationship, the better it's going to be for you long term. Yeah, no, definitely. But some of them said, yeah, absolutely. Come on in. They were really welcoming. So that was sort of one, you know, I knew some people in the, in the industry as well. And through like LinkedIn as well, you try to be a little bit active on that while you're um, a student. And in the end, more clinics were coming to me throughout fourth year rather than me having to go and chase them down. And I was sending you job offers as well from different people I knew who were looking. You I did. said, Josh, here's a couple <laughs> that I think you should go and have a look at. And, and this is why you need to maintain contact with students. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and that's a part of it. No matter what industry you're in, you can be as good as you like, but you can't sell a secret. So you have to get out there and network. And that was something that I actively felt I needed to do early on because I'm used to being quite reserved. Yeah. Just work hard, put your head down but you realize you had to put yourself out there a little bit, which I think only helps you. Yeah. I have a side question for you. What did your GPA end up at? Uh, it ended up at 6.94. Oh, <laughs> did you, you got a distinction in something? Two. So I got 37s and two sixes. Yeah. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not a bad effort. That's a few more than what I got, but uh, that, that is a great effort because I kept following you because like you said, we created this network of people. That's how we met. We, I think we Absolutely. connected first on LinkedIn, I think it was, and then through Facebook. Then I had you come on the podcast, and then since then, we're in each other's lives now. That's right. You can't get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'll go on to the second question. Was, was there anything mm. in any particular ad that when you saw it, it just put you off? It was a red flag. You just went, no, I wouldn't apply for that. Maybe not like too many, say, red flags as such, but getting those emails from Seek all the time, you, you started to see a little bit of a trend. A lot of the, the ads seem to use almost like a, a cookie cutter approach and used each other's ads like verbatim. So yeah. to be like certain buzzwords, just like work-life balance or varied caseload, like consistent mentoring. And of course, all of these things are really great, but it sort of didn't give you as much detail as potentially you would like. But on the flip side, I think some of the ads did seem a little bit more appealing for whatever reason. And then that would maybe lead you to go to their website or look at their Instagram page. And you could see a, like a really marked difference in between the way that they advertised themselves. Like some clinics, you could see they had a really clear vision of where they wanted to go. And sometimes the culture just really jumped off the page and you could yeah. say, that's a place I'd like to be involved in. It's amazing. Mention the culture when I do the, uh, well, it was the 12 week reboot. Now it's the live reboot. 
the first session is all about team culture and the culture of the business. And that culture runs right through your social media, right through to your, to your website. So it's interesting that you pointed that out as well, that even if you saw an ad that was a little bit interesting, you then went and checked them out on the social pages and took a look at their website. And I'm sure there was some that you looked at and went, oh, that's interesting. You looked at the website and you went, oh, that's a dog's breakfast. It yeah, didn't match. It yeah. hadn't been updated for years and it's that's how you sort of present yourself. And I think patients would be doing the same kind of thing. Yeah, okay. So anyone, anyway, any employer listening to that, if you haven't updated your website at the moment, you should go, go and check out podiatryclinicwebsites.com. I know that they do them. And uh, Jim McDonald does websites as well. So does Foster Web Marketing. So there's a lot of places out there that do really good websites for podiatrists. So next question, how many interviews did you end up having? Yeah, over a course of a few months, I ended up having uh, probably about three phone interviews and about the same number of like, face-to-face interviews. And sometimes a certain place did seem like really attractive, but potentially in, a, in an area I wasn't looking to move to at the moment or yeah. things just didn't seem to work out and broke down in the process and it's due to no one's fault. But then that's a part and parcel of going to these interviews. You're learning about them, they're learning about you. That's true. It is. It, it is. A, it's a two-way street mm. about you've got to, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. So I think it's important for everyone to remember that. So the ones that you rejected, was there a reason why you rejected certain offers? Obviously it had to be in a geographical area that you wanted to be in for starters. Cause I know I recommended one that was a bit further away from Brisbane. You went, good job, but too far. Yeah, no, that would have been like absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. you know, very sort of lovely clinician as well. I think in terms of rejecting say most of the sort of interest or offers, I think you have to understand, first of all, who you are and who you'd like to be as a person and a practitioner. And if you say no in the next one, three, five, ten years, this is where I would like to be, then you can look at the clinic that's approaching you and say, yes, I think that this would be the place where I'd be able to get myself to those points. And I would, you know, my interests, my values align with their vision or potentially not. So that would be, you know, a major sort of area where I would say yes or no to a certain clinic. And that's obviously just going to be a good thing for the clinic as well, because mm. if, if your you know, goals are aligned, you can move ahead because um, a lot of people going into the business think, well, what can they give me? But as an employee, I think it's very important to be able to say to the employer as well, like, this is what I can provide you. And I'm here to run it as if it is my own business. I want us to all do well collectively. Okay, so the person who got you, I, I know, has got an absolute gem. <laughs> <laughs> so the person that you did say, the, the position you did say yes to, was there, what was it about that made you say yes to that particular position? Yeah, a really good sort of balance, I think, of, say, location suited me really nicely down to the ground. Enough support in terms of like CPD, on-the-job training, but also in this kind of role, I'll be getting an opportunity to see, I get essentially be thrown in the deep end and then people are there if you do need them. Yeah. I think the place where I will be working as well will help me grow because fully understand that it's just the beginning at university and you have to keep developing. You've only just started to scratch the surface. So I guess in terms of like support and growth moving forward is the key area more than like remuneration in monetary terms okay so what aspects of podiatry did you like most yeah i guess we've always discussed that i've always had an interest in that sport biomechanics working in the footwear store was what sort of led me towards that and that's always been the case as we moved further and further through to the degree i think i realized that i have a real interest in the podiatric surgery as well after finishing my final exams in november I actually flew down to Sydney and attended the ACTS cadaver course with some of the pod surgeons down there and the, like the surgeons and the registrars really welcoming and extremely knowledgeable. I would think of them as real like experts in the mm. field and some you know, people to look up to. And so that's an area maybe for future reference that I'd be looking potentially to move towards as well. Yeah. So and really just being able to offer different avenues where you can help your patient because everyone's different and there's no just this will help everybody. So if you have as many tools as you can in your tool belt, I think it's only going to be a good thing. I couldn't agree more. And the last question is, was money a factor? I think it was to a degree. You're working extremely hard these, you know, say, four years and you're looking to 
move yourself ahead in life and, and things are very expensive the cost of living these days but I think you would be making a mistake if you had that as your sole focus in looking for a job and I think only in the long term that uh, you wouldn't end up where you'd like to be. I did have some offers that seemed extremely high and then others that seemed a bit lower and probably ended up about in the middle. But I think that'd be the, the place for me in the end. And I think in the long term, you'll be doing yourself a favor. Okay. So you didn't chase the money. And this is what a lot of employees keep, I've heard them say on social media pages, oh, these new graduates come out and yeah, they want this unrealistic amount of money. But when I'm talking to new grads, that's not what I'm hearing. They want to be paid, but they're not chasing these massive dollars that some people are, are throwing out there that they're asking for. No, but like from I know for like grads who maybe finished three or four years ago, the like the starting salaries just across the board did seem to be much higher compared to what they were just a few years ago. So you, you sort of couldn't go too wrong really, and I guess that comes back to to a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Yeah. As a graduate, you're still going to have a lot to learn as well. And you don't just want to say be, be sucking off of the clinic. You need to be putting back into it. And if you're taking too much, then they're not going to be able to help you improve and improve themselves as well and improve the whole industry. No, that's a fair call. So the last thing isn't a question. It's just more some advice. So if there's an employer listening to this right now, do you have any final comments for them that could be beneficial for them in the future when they're putting their, their job ad together and looking for a podiatrist? I guess be very clear with what they're offering. And if they do have people applying, make sure that they follow up with that as well. Like obviously, it's not the primary role of clinicians, that kind of uh, thing to be interviewing. But if it is something that the a clinician is looking to get someone on board, I guess that is a priority for you in that moment. So you have to invest time in it. I do know like some students will be applying for certain positions and then communication would just completely drop off from oh, the, okay. the, the clinic's end. And then later you hear well, that, that there are no pods. So <laughs> I guess, yeah, so just be transparent and be honest and look for the students and they'll come through. I had heard that from somebody else where they, two positions they applied for, and they had the initial conversation, not with the actual owner of the business, it was like their offsider, it could be the practice mm. manager, and it never went any further than that. Okay, so have you got an example of somebody not getting back to you where you phoned them or you had a bit of a conversation? Can you explain what took place? Yeah, like for one of the instances that happened to myself, I you know, contacted a, a nice sort of looking clinic and they responded uh, just with an email and said, could you please prepare a five or seven minute video? These are the questions we'd like you to answer throughout the video. You, you set aside a bit of time and within a couple of days, you, you get that prepared. But if you're anything like me, it, it's not just that seven minutes. It takes quite a few times to get it how you'd like it. You're a bit of a perfectionist. Yeah, I can relate to uh, that. And then, so you send send that off, submit that. and But then Unfortunately, you just never heard back from the, the folks, even just to say, thanks for your video, but maybe not quite for us. That's amazing. That, especially because like you said, I know how long it takes to do a video. And I do a lot of short videos on my YouTube channel. And sometimes I'll do 20 takes and I just, I throw them all out because they're all terrible. And yeah, lose your train of, yeah, you yeah. lose your train of thought. And you're thinking, oh, if we can just get this in one take, then I don't have to do any editing. But it never usually works out that way. So that oh, that just surprised me that you go to all that effort, all that time of putting a video together, sending it to them, and all you get is you know, silence. I ghosted you. Literally. Obviously, that's not the clinic for me. So that, that's fine. Yeah. In the end, it, it's fine. You get your answer either way. But it, it would be nice just to get that response and move forward either way. It's fine. No, that makes sense. And yeah, I just you know, find that surprising. Yeah. No, me too. I was very surprised. And if you're not... You're not going to keep chasing them either if you're busy with your exams and you've got other sort of offers and things to be doing as well. So everyone has to just prioritize their time and, and hopefully they can prioritize that around that sort of time of the year as well. No, that is great. So Josh, that has been fantastic. It was good to get you. I was hoping you would come back on since you'd been on the show a few times before. You, you were you're at the top of my list that I wanted to get on here. So thank you very much for coming on and sharing your of the information on how you chose your employer thank you very much thanks for having me tyson okay see ya see ya